Well, the most exciting thing about sodium ion batteries is it's, it's sustainable, much more than lithium. It's lower cost, because it doesn't have those expensive raw materials, and it's safer. This is spodumene. It's the mineral that two-thirds of the world's lithium comes from. It's only found in a few places, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Australia and a few others. It's expensive and there's concern that there may not be enough of it to supply our voracious demand for electric vehicle batteries. This is common salt. There is 35 kilograms of it in every cubic metre of seawater and there's deposits on land. It's cheap as chips, it's everywhere. And so there's a question about whether you could replace the lithium in our batteries with sodium from salt. And if you could, it would solve a lot of problems. So can you do it? Well, we've come to a company called Faradian to find out. Welcome to Fully Charged. Fully Charged Live is coming to California this September 10th and 11th, powered by Electrify America. Get your tickets to the number one EV and home energy show now. So we're talking here about replacing lithium with sodium. Now let's have a look at why that works. This is the periodic table. It lays out all the elements that exist. This is all the types of atom that we have. Whatever we make, it has to be made out of things in here. So this is the toolbox we've got to work with. Now the way it works is that everything in a column has similar properties generally, but it gets heavier as you go down. So if we look up here in the top left hand corner, we can see lithium right up there. It's a really small atom. It's only the third one. Um, and just below it here is sodium, Na. And so sodium has similar properties to lithium, but it's just a little bit heavier. So it's not that they've just picked an element out of the air. There's a very good reason for thinking that sodium might be a very good replacement for lithium. The sodium ion battery works very similar to a lithium ion battery. There's different flavors of lithium ion. Today there's lithium iron phosphate, which is very competitive with sodium ion technology today. So that's why we see sodium ion also moving into passenger cars where lithium iron phosphate is as well. We're, we, the technology has legs, so we're catching up to what's called NMC or nickel manganese cobalt technology, so we will see the energy density increase, but it is very comparable to, to lithium. Fredin started in end of 2011, so it's been just over 10 years, and if you look at that trajectory relative to the trajectory of lithium ion, what you'll see is actually the progress has been at a much faster rate. And I think when we first started working on sodium ion, it wasn't a very well-known option as a battery solution and I think a lot of people dismissed it because typically you look at the relative size of a lithium ion relative to a sodium ion and you see sodium is bigger, heavier and you think it's never going to be able to compete for an energy density perspective. In fact, the work that we've done over the last 10 years has been able to dispel that perception. And now we can see that um, it's a, a valid technical solution. So let's have a look at the job that the sodium needs to do in this system. Uh, well, we're used to looking at batteries and here is a battery. This is one of Faradian's batteries. It's a real thing. It's, it's definitely real uh, and it works. And when we look at the outside of a battery, what we see are positive and negative terminals. And that's what we connect up to our electrical circuit. But on the inside of the battery, it looks a little bit different. So on the inside, those two things become an anode and a cathode. And that, those are just electrical connectors that go into the battery. And between the anode and the cathode, there's something which is normally a liquid at the moment, and that's called an electrolyte. And the game is that to get electrons to go around the outside of the circuit, outside the battery, you need charged particles, ions, to go in between the anode and the cathode inside the battery. And in a lithium ion battery, it's lithium that is going between the anode and the cathode. And in a sodium ion battery, it's sodium that's doing that job. So that all sounds very simple, but to make it work, the devil is very much in the detail. It's all about what goes around it. And that's what determines how effective it is, how efficient it is, uh, and how well it does the job of being a battery. 
In a lithium ion battery, the lithium sits in the cathode and the electrolyte, and the anode is made of graphite. In a sodium ion battery, we swap our lithium in the cathode for sodium, lithium in the electrolyte for sodium, and instead of using a graphite type anode, we use a hard carbon. Because we use hard carbon as an anode, instead of graphite as you would in lithium iron, it means that we have a broader range of electrolytes that are available to us. So the graphite restricts some of the electrolytes that are available in lithium iron, which are available with the hard carbon anode. So that means that we can uh, control our operating temperature to, to a wider window. So down to, to minus 30 degrees C, for example, and up to plus 60 degrees C. So that's a huge range, the temperature Absolutely. range. Absolutely, and, and the electrolyte that's wider than lithium, stable. right? That's right, yes. So yeah. these are actually safer from a temperature point of view. Yes, yeah, so they, they have that broader operating window for temperature. And just to prove that this is all real and it works, what this is, is a residential energy storage system. So it's basically a big battery that could go in your house, take energy from solar panels, and it's full of these cells. This is a sodium ion battery uh, product. And there it is, it works. The markets for sodium ion battery are, are really broad, but I think that let's say the low hanging fruit of the markets that we're already in now is stationary energy storage. So we're already shipping products to Australia. We have a joint venture in Australia. So these are residential energy storage packs. You, we have some in our facility here you'll be able to see today. Uh, it'll going towards telecom, which is a big part of it as well. Uh, telecom is really expanding quite a bit. Uh, and then also will be utility and grid. So that's the, the entry level market. But if it's big, heavy, stand still, go slower, moves fast, it's a good market for, for Adyen and sodium ions. If we, we consider them from a performance perspective, the current generation of sodium ion cells are equivalent to lithium ion phosphate in terms of energy density. And we have a roadmap for development to go well beyond that. So we're looking at in excess of 200 watt hours per kilo, for example, at the cell level. And how does that compare to typical batteries that we have around now? So, so that's in excess of the energy density of lithium ion phosphate, for example. And so if you, I mean, is this something that might be suitable for automotive applications for cars where you've got rapid acceleration or is it, does it just not move that quickly? So we see where applications where LFP is, is is part of so the that's solution. lithium ion phosphate batteries. Sorry, yeah, lithium ion phosphate. So, so we see sodium ion as being a replacement for applications where lead acid batteries are being used and applications where lithium ion phosphate batteries are being used. And there's obviously been a lot recently about the use of lithium ion phosphate in automotive applications. It's always exciting when a new technology works, but we know now that that is not enough. The questions which matter for a better future are, are these things affordable? Are they accessible to everybody? Can they be made sustainably and can they be recycled? Those are the things that determine whether these solutions are really going to be part of a practical future. And that's what's going to determine whether the sodium tortoise might overtake the lithium hare. Yeah, sodium ion can be recycled very much in the way you recycle lithium ion batteries. One of the main differences we can, there's two main differences. One is we can completely discharge the cell to zero volts, so we can completely get all of the energy out of the cell and short it. You cannot do that with lithium ion battery. So when you bring a lithium ion battery in to recycle it, it always has 30, 40% state of charge. So this makes it much safer to be able to do that. Um, on the downside, from an urban mining standpoint, we don't have the expensive raw materials, so there's not as much to recover from that respect. From a, a use perspective, no, they won't notice a difference at all. The, the visual difference that you see when you look at a sodium ion cell versus a lithium ion cell is you see you've got aluminium on both sides for sodium and you might have aluminium and copper for your lithium. Um, but in terms of an end user, the way they use their battery, that, that won't be any different at all. What they will have is they will be able to 
potentially see the lower cost with sodium ion. I'm sure an end user would appreciate that difference. Yeah, the cost difference between sodium ion and lithium will be pretty significant. Uh, sodium doesn't have the expensive raw materials. Lithium, there's no lithium, there's no cobalt, there's no copper, there's no graphite. So we have lower cost raw materials, which also, of course, makes it environmentally safer. But so in terms of volume, it'll be about 24 to 32% less expensive. Uh, on a cell basis than lithium. So it's pretty significant. Now it's important to say that there's more to Faradion than just what we can see here in Sheffield. They've got parts of their manufacturing all over the world. They're actually piggybacking on a lot of lithium ion manufacturing capability, but they're about to start bringing all of that in-house and doing their own manufacturing. But the point is, there's much more than just all of this to this company. It's, it's happening now, but it goes from gradual to suddenly, as you know, and I think that's definitely what's happening with Faradian is all of a sudden, uh, you, in the beginning we had to explain why sodium ion was important, and, and now it's more about being able to really invest into the, to scaling up the technology. So the biggest, the biggest uh, you know, impact on timing is the equipment lead times right now, and that's where some of the supply chains have an impact. It, and again, it, it varies in terms of timing. I think if you're looking at the, the grid or the energy storage or the telecoms, these are conversations that are very, very active and where we're building demonstrators or we have product already that we're shipping. If you look towards more towards trucks and buses or you look towards passenger EVs, we're engaged with them, but we know that timeline is a little bit further out. So, but it's important that we stay engaged with them and, and, and you, know, you don't want to develop technology in isolation. You really need to partner with the main players in that space to really advance the technology. The most exciting thing about sodium ion batteries is that right now they are here and they are ready. So this is, this is not in the lab anymore, you know, this is in production, these are real products, these are, are going out to customers and, and the, the the potential is huge. So this is a really interesting technology. I'm genuinely fascinated by the idea that this was just sort of hidden for a few years. It's an idea that went away, had 30 years in the wilderness and then came back. But I think it's really important. There will be no one battery to rule them all. But if there are options that are made of materials that are far, far more common, that is a very big deal, and especially if those materials are also less toxic and less damaging to extract from the environment, both in terms of environmental cost and in human cost. So this sounds like it's got enormous potential and it'd be really exciting to see how quickly they can scale it up um, and just how far it's going to go. So that's it for this episode. Um, if you'd like to support us, please do so on Patreon. Have a look at what's on the website. There's loads going on. And if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>